to stay
week is a long time in football. Back-to-back -back victories means we're now no longer looking over our shoulders, but looking up again. Jacko takes the Addicts up to South Yorkshire to face Doncaster Rovers this afternoon, knowing that a win could see us just a point off the top half of the table. Lots coming up, as ever, in today's show. We will, of course, speak exclusively to the gaffer, Johnny Jackson, and also striker Connor Washington. We'll also look back at last Saturday's win over Burton, which Connor scored in. And we hear from defender Anna Philby ahead of a South London derby at the Oakwood tomorrow. Great to say that Brownie is with me in the studio. Curbs is still sunning himself in Cancun, isn't he? Uh, you should say there, two wins out of two. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> You're the lucky charm, is that what you're saying? Uh, no, you can say that. Oh, <laughs> we started on that note already, haven't we? Look, delighted to say we also have a Charlton TV debutant like last week and we have a League One title winner. It is a warm welcome to Charlton TV, Royce Wiggins. Royce, how are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Good, good. You looking forward to today? Yes, yeah, definitely. I'm looking uh, behind me. I don't know no why game. I just pointed yeah. there. They're not playing. They're up in South Yorkshire. Yeah, but no. Yeah, what do you think of the studio? Yeah, it's nice. It's smaller yeah. than it looks. Yeah, no, it's perfect. It is. Do you see much of the guys uh, at all, you know, in terms of the, the team or follow the results? Um, yeah, like check in on the results every so, so often and make sure the team's sort of performing and winning like you'd like to see them do. But, um, yeah, not, not, too, not too often to the Valley uh, to watch the game in person. And I understand you go to the training ground every so often, don't you? Just tell us why. Yeah, um, so first team um, sports nutritionist now, so looking after the lads and making sure they're in trim and uh, proper shape ready for the game. So... Um, yeah, started a few weeks back now and uh, really enjoying a new role. Yeah, it's good fun, is it? Everyone's open to it? Yeah, everyone. So it's, um, it's, it's been difficult to come in halfway through the season and stuff. So um, at, at the minute, players have just been coming to see me rather than speaking as a, as a sort of collective group. So um, we've had, I've, I've had a really good response from the lads and um, everyone's been welcoming. Brilliant. Can you do anything with Brownie? <laughs> I'm not, sure, I'm not sure he wants to <laughs> be horrified. I'm not sure he wants to be horrified. We saw the diet. You've just been comparing <laughs> horror and knee uh, stories, haven't you? Which we may um, visit a little bit later on. Brandy, look, back to back wins for yep. us, important wins as well. We're safe now, aren't we? Oh, yeah, we were. I didn't I'm ever still really, hearing some fans I, no, saying. I know. I'm not but, blaming you, but no. I'm still hearing some fans saying we're not 100% safe. Yeah, uh, we're safe. And I, I didn't think that was a realistic you know, prospect, if I'm honest. Um, I thought we had enough in the locker. We had a really tough run and I expected us to pick up more than a point in that seven games. We didn't, but I still didn't see us as relegation mm. candidates. You know, the four teams down the bottom, well, there's five that are proper struggling in my eyes. I, it only it was only ever going to take one or two wins and we were always going to get that at some point and we've got them last week. We, we're safe as houses in my eyes. What you want to see is the team push on again, get another result today. And, and as Johnny Jackson keeps saying, finish as strong as we can. Can we, can we get up to that 12th spot? Should we be making it three wins out of three today? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, they're in. I mean, I know, I know what's been said. They're fighting for their lives, and it's last chance to But if you look at the results they've just had, Scott, against teams struggling around them, you know, they really needed to pick up more wins in the last four or five games than they have. They've got a couple of tough ones coming up after that. I mean, they've got Wickham and somebody else up there quite strong, and then they've got Crew in between that, and they've not picked up the results they should have or needed to pick up to really force themselves out of the relegation zone, so I think they're banging trouble. And Royce, just before we move on as well, you, you played with Jacko, of course, didn't you? Yeah. Teammate. Did you see him as a, as a future manager? I did, yeah. I, I shared a story quite um, frequently with people. Um, I remember, again, quite clearly um, up at Ber uh, Berry in, in the League One campaign, and uh, I started off badly. I weren't, I weren't playing well, and he gave me what for and, and made sure I sort of uh, I got back on it. and. Um, Ever since then, I saw what a good leader he was, what a good character he was, and um, his expectations of performances and stuff on the pitch as well. So, yeah, I, I'd, I saw it early from Jacko, and mm. I think he's, he's showing people now what, what he's capable of. You felt the force early, and he's <laughs> <the> managing now. <laughs> Talking yeah. of Jacko, I spoke to him via Zoom a little early, and I, I talked about the first question was exactly how, after back-to-back -back wins, perhaps him and the squad are in a better place right now. Yeah, definitely. Winning obviously helps Scott also uh, to get to get the back to back win, back to back clean. Um, you know, it makes everyone feel better. It's a sort of slant on it. Um, it was a tough run that we did, but we've come through it out the other side, and uh, we're in a much better place now. 
yeah, I mean, it's very two sort of bitty games against teams that make it very difficult for you to, to try and play good football against. What pleased you most about those two wins? I think the clean sheet was the, the clean sheets was the most important thing. Um, conceding too many goals in, in that bad run, you know, twos and threes at times, and it's, it makes it impossible to pick, pick up results. So, um, back to being more solid, keeping sheets always going to give you a chance. You know, especially having the likes of Connor and uh, Jane up front, uh, you know, you're always going to have a chance for more. So, uh, if you can keep them out the other end, you're going to win more games. Than you. Absolutely. So, so back to back wins. What's the thinking on the team? Any surprises? No, no surprises at all, Scott. And name the name the same team. I think it's the last time that we've been able to do that three games in a row now. So um, listen, I've been pleased with the, the wins, the performances, and, and I think the lads, you know, they deserve they, they all come through. So I think they deserve their starting spot. And look, a home form has been superb, really, since you took over. And in fact, I think it was your first home win against Doncaster, a very convincing win as well. But we really have struggled on the road, haven't we? What do you put that down to? I don't know. It's, it's difficult to know. I think uh, we are comfortable at home in front of our crowd, our pit, uh, big pitch. I think it suits us. Lots of spaces to play. It's not always the case away from and it's really difficult. You have to find a different way at times. And, uh, we haven't managed to do that. So obviously that's something that we're, that we're keen to address. Um, you know, having, having a full sort of strong roster of players to choose from is going to help with that as well. You know, no getting away from it. So uh, no excuses. Now we've got you know we've got big guns back if you like, and uh, we're we're place. So we we need to go out there. Because we're a high roll uh, with points up. And looking at the table, I think the fans would probably think, it, you know, we've got to try and get three points, but you're up against a team that is in the relegation zone, haven't won in four, but will be absolutely scrapping to try and get any point they possibly can. What are you expecting from Donny today? Exactly that. You know, they're a team fighting for their lives, and I said to the lads, I'm not going to make it easy. Right. Uh, the run of form that they're on, where they are in the league, it's, and they're going, to, they're going to be scrapping and they're going to make it difficult. So we need to match that. We need to have that mentality that, that we're fighting for the points as well. And I like to think the quality will, will show over the 90 minutes, but first and foremost, you know, we have to match them. And just finally, what's your message to the 700 odd people then, supporters that are travelling up to South Yorkshire to, to support the team? Uh, just thank you very much again for your support. Uh, amazing all season. Uh, has, it been, uh, has it been the best? Of but they've stuck by the team and travel with the amount of mark they put in. So um, can't thank them enough for their support and really, really want to send them away with something to shout about today. Great stuff, Jacko. Thanks very much and good luck today. Good, Scott. So let's have a look at the team then. It is the same team for the third successive game, as Jacko was saying, and that's really important, Brownie, isn't it? That's what he's been asking for over the last couple of months. Yeah, I, th I think um, we've all been asking for that pretty much from the offset. You know, if you go back to Nigel Atkins and the period he went through, six, seven changes a game. It just doesn't breed any confidence within the team, doesn't breed any consistency. Um, and so actually, it's, it's nice, even though we're in the latter stage of the season, it's nice that I think from Johnny's perspective, he can put out the same side over and over again. You know, particularly after that performance at Accrington, where, you know, where you know, he needed to make changes again. And he needed a performance out of the players. He got it. He stuck with those players and they've got him a couple of results, which is good to see. Mm. And Royce, I know you haven't seen too much of Charlton, but it's just so important to get your best players out there, isn't it? And Conor Washington and Jaden Stockley playing up front together, they work so well and two of our best players. Yeah, definitely. Um, like you said, they're, they're proven goal scorers as well. They've, they've, they've scored, uh, Conor especially, scored quite a few goals this season for Charlton. So to get them both back out and playing is uh, is vital for the overall team uh, team results throughout the season. Uh, it's been a shame that they've had periods where they've missed, but um, hopefully now they can they can play the rest of the season and make the difference. Happy with the bench as well, Brownie. If things aren't going quite right. Yeah, I, I think um, you know we've always said at times strength in depth has been good. You know, we, it's not often you look at the bench and you think, well, that's a bit we're really light, you know, because we've got a big squad. You know, that's, that's if, if anything, that's one of the criticisms is that <laughs> with that big squad comes a lot of choices to be made. But, um, yeah, there are options there that can certainly help. 
um, I, I think it's down to you know if you're if you're in that show at the moment and you're out of contract, you're going to be want to out. You're going to be want to be out there. You know, so you've you've got to be earning that right. I think we you know we talk about Doncaster and and they're in a fight. Some of these players are in a bit of a fight well, as well. They're fighting for their, their charts and careers and, and their, their own careers generally, aren't they? Absolutely. Um, in prime example for me would be Connor. You know, I'm not sure he can do a lot more than he's doing than scoring the goals he's scoring. His contract's up and, you know, he'll be getting well, suitors yeah. from elsewhere. We'll, we'll come on to him in, in, in a little bit later on because there is a good chat there, I have to say. Let's look at the league table right now, shall we? And we are, as we know, in the bottom half, but last weekend's win against Burton saw us leapfrog Cambridge into 15th. Another win today will take us up to 14th. We're 13 points above the drop zone. That's not a concern anymore. <laughs> Four points off the top half and probably one of seven sides looking to finish the season in 12th. You look at Donny, their second bottom, four points to drift to safety. You can make that five with their poor goal difference as well. 30 points from 39 matches. Let's have a look at the top half then. And Cheltenham are in that 12th position on 50 points. But right at the top, I mean, we can capitalise on Rotherham's shock defeat to Shrewsbury by earning a 4-1 win over Morecambe. The gap at the summit now just a point. Wigan host uh, boast two games in hand. More worryingly for Rotherham is MK Dons just four points away. Plymouth a fourth as well. They've now won nine of the last 11 league matches, including all of the last six without conceding a goal. And... Brownie, I mean, we thought it was a, you know, those two were absolutely nailed on, but MK Dons are making a real race for it, aren't they? They, they really are. I mean, a credit to them, you know, in terms of their their budget and their squad size, you know, they've consistently churned out results. I actually thought they were going to fall away, mm. if truth be told. Um, I thought Rotherham and, and Wigan were going to run away with it. Uh, Rotherham are the ones for me. They're you know, really stuttering and actually... You know, in terms of seven games left, they probably need 10 points. 90 normally gets you promotion, doesn't it? That just slightly over two points a game. Uh, sorry, slightly under two points a game. Normally 90 gets you promotion. And, you know, you, you'd think they've got 10 points in them from now to the end of the season. But, you know, pressure does amazing things. Absolutely. And yeah, we've it got really does. As well before the end of the season. Royce, why don't you a former club, Sheffield Wednesday, right in there at the moment as well, aren't they? Look, what, a point off the playoffs with a game in hand. Fancy them to get in there? Um, the club they are, I, w I would, yeah, but um, League One, you never know, do you? I, I would expect Sheffield Wednesday to be like Cholton, right at the top, fighting for um, automatic promotion, not just playoff spots. So um, I'm sure, I'm sure they'll get there. We've got a game in hand as well. So um, if they if they do get playoffs, then I, I'd fancy them in the playoffs as well with the um, the. The home advantage in, in one of the legs as well. You'll be up there on Sheffield Wednesday TV as well, won't you? I'm sure you will. Uh, six games in League One this afternoon. That's, of course, due to the international break. Gillingham travel to Accrington. Wimbledon do battle with Cambridge. Two of the divisions port a form sides in Ipswich and Plymouth square off at Portman Road. While seventh place Sheffield Wednesday welcome Cheltenham to Hillsborough and Lincoln, who we host here at the Valley next weekend, visit Shrewsbury. An Ipswich Plymouth game mm. has to be a standout fixture, doesn't it? <laughs> it is the standout one, isn't it, of those? But you, you know, for different reasons, you look at the the Gillingham Accrington game. Gillingham have, have had a little mini, you know, spell under under, under Neil, and they're fighting for their lives. And AFC Wimbledon can't buy a win. No, you know, they desperately need a win against Cambridge. That's a good opportunity for them. Cambridge are sliding. I mean, they're safe, I would say, but they're sliding down the league. So that's a great opportunity for Wimbledon. So I think that, uh, the bottom end for me today is more interesting yeah. than that Ipswich Plymouth game. Is, uh, all those guys are playing and they all need a result. Roy, it's just on Wimbledon. They finally dropped into the bottom four last weekend. No wins in 19. I mean, to say they need a win is the understatement <laughs> of the season, but you haven't been on the run like that. But when you've gone through horrible runs, how, how just difficult is it to be going out there and playing football? I think yeah, com confidence is massive in football. Like you said, that's a that's a hell of a record to hold. No win in 19. So um, yeah, their confidence would probably be pretty uh, on the on the lower side of things. So um, if they can they can scrape some points to the end of the season, then they're doing well. They need to turn things around of that. There's no doubt. Okay, club update news now, shall we? And we'll start with uh, home ticketing news. Uh, tickets for our three remaining league matches at the Valley this season are all on general sale now. We host Lincoln Saturday, April the 2nd, Morecambe Easter Friday, April the 15th, and Shrewsbury Saturday, April the 23rd in what is our final home game of the season. Tickets for all three matches can be purchased by heading to booking.cafc.co.uk. 
A streaming update now, and supporters are reminded that today's game is only available to live stream outside of the UK and Ireland as per EFL broadcasting rules, as is the case with every Saturday 3pm game this season. We can only live stream outside of England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, Jersey, Guernsey, the Isle of Man and the Republic of Ireland. Overseas fans can purchase a match pass for today's match for just £10 by going to cafc.co.uk and we're also not streaming in the Russian Federation at present. Well, a huge congratulations to Hamza Saraz, under-18 side who have been crowned Professional Development League 2 South champions in record time. The young addicts have earned the regional title with six games to spare following a 2-1 win at Bristol City last weekend. Incredibly, in their 18 league matches, they've won 15, drawn two, lost just one, which came on the opening day of the season and have a goal difference of plus 39 having scored 63 goals. At the end of the season, they will contest the playoff semi-final with the Northern Division's runners-up and then a potential final to determine who will be crowned national champions. We wish you guys all the very best. Well, 18-year-old Academy graduate Aaron Henry is continuing to impress on loan at Wealdstone, having assisted the Stones opener against league leaders Stockport County with a pinpoint corner last weekend. Their midfielder scored that fantastic free kick from 25 yards. The fans can find out how all of our loanees are faring by reading this week's Loan Watch on cafc.co.uk. And it's so good, it's worth watching it twice. Charlton Giro, Connor Washington and Megan Wynn will star in the Q&A session open to all overseas addicts on Tuesday, March the 29th, hosted by our very own Charlotte Richardson. The event will kick off from 6pm GMT before finishing at approximately 8.30pm. Supporters can book their place by heading to booking.cafc.co.uk and are asked to email their questions to fans at cafc.co.uk. Well, Karen Hills' addicts are in league action tomorrow afternoon when they welcome near neighbours Crystal Palace to the Oakwood in Crayford. Tickets are priced at £10 for adults and £5 for concessions, with supporters encouraged to get their tickets to get behind Charlton as they look to build on last weekend's point against league leaders Liverpool. And supporters who cannot attend tomorrow's game at the Oakwood will be able to watch all of the action live on the FA Player for free. Simply head to the FA Player website to register your free account and coverage will start shortly before the 3.30 kickoff. OK, well, staying on the subject of Sunday's game, Charlton TV spoke to uh, defender Anna Philby uh, last week. It's massive. Everyone wants to play in them sort of games. Um, derby games, we know what it means for the fans and we just want to go out there and put in a performance again that we can be proud of. And obviously, last time we were at the Oakwood, 671 came down to watch the game. What does that mean for you as players? What does that bring? What kind of energy does that bring? It brought a lot of energy. As players, we really felt it. There was a, a massive atmosphere. Yeah, it was just amazing to play with, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. And obviously, last time you played, played against Crystal Palace, it was obviously they got a 3-2 victory. What do you need to do this time to get the result um, turned around this time? I think prepare like we have done for the two Liverpool games. I think our preparation was spot on, and that's what we need again this week. Um, yeah, and we'll go there with a bit of a, ven a vengeance, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, great to hear from Anna there. We wish her and her teammates all the very best of luck tomorrow. OK, uh, there were two additions to the Charlton family uh, last weekend as uh, Chucks and Ike's and also Jaden Stockley's partners gave birth. And here's how the squad celebrated in the last week. Yeah, yeah just wanted to help you. Congratulate, um, firstly, Jaden and Becky on the birth of their baby boy, Abel. It's something that uh, us as lads, whenever a player has a baby, a new baby, um, we like to get them a little something from the lads, like some flowers, a little baby kit, um, just to acknowledge that they've had a new baby and it's obviously a blessing bringing a baby into the world. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate that. Um, one, it's one of your teammates. Um, we want to congratulate them and obviously their wives or, or girlfriends have been through something quite tough um, and we want to acknowledge that and, and, and show a bit of togetherness. I think that's the most important thing. You sort of try and give a little bit of advice, but then I think when you've had three, you realise everything, everything's so different and everyone's 
process is all different, so that's a real learning curve, everyone individually, um, and I think he'll find that out as he goes on. <laughs> I think he will struggle with sli lack of sleep, yeah, Chucks will, definitely. <laughs> How times have changed, eh, Brownie? <laughs> yeah, a little bit, yeah. Curbs, uh, man, he's gone into labour. Yeah. Uh, well, I won't be up to the game. Yeah, you will. I wasn't finding you. OK, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> you were here when you had your kid, weren't you? Yes, yeah. Um, How did you sleep? No, I, I, I missed one game, so I, I managed <laughs> to get one on. Got more than me. I, I missed, I missed taking, taking my little girl home, so I was up in the um, hotel in Ipswich. We played um, New Year's Day. So, yeah, I, I, missed, I, missed, uh, I missed Boxing Day, I think she was in there before. I, I had th well, we had three kids in 16 months, but it was all, I didn't sleep for four years, but Oof. it was all post-playing, so I, I couldn't have done it during my playing career, I have to say, but, but listen, guys, you know, congratulations, and it is a very, very special thing, there's nothing more important than family. Uh, I think we should move on before Brownie starts talking about curves again, and <laughs> not happy about that fine he was about to give He did a lot of good things. <laughs> of course. Uh, well, are you ready to head down memory lane? Yes, if you, yeah. OK, Why let's not? go. First of all, tell us how you joined Charlton in 2011, because you, you were linked with both us and Watford, and I do believe Watford were in a higher division at that time. Yeah. So what, what did Pauli say to get you here? Um, not just Pauli, but the, the owners as well um, had deep conversations with them and about the project that they were trying to build and where the club was going. So um, they sold it to me well, and um, the decision was perfect, really. I, I, Got fond memories of Charlton and what we achieved as well. So yeah, I mean, look, you were one of what 17 players that were signed before the end of August that summer. I mean, that's crazy, isn't it? In, in a way, and in a way, it, it shouldn't have worked, but it so did, didn't it? Yeah, what was that like? like you said, uh, we we touched on it earlier. The amount of players that are, are here at the minute, and sometimes it can can work for you, sometimes it can work against you. But um, I've got to say, the gaffer, like Pauli, um Right from the start, just got everyone involved. His man management was brilliant. Yeah. Um, we had Alex a, Dyer was he here? Was Alex it? Dyer, yeah. So um, the man, man, man management and, and the coaching level was was spot on right from the start. We had a, a good pre-season tour as well, which got everyone nicely bonded. And um, yeah, like you said, we we hit the ground running that season and didn't look back. That, that's the one thing I do really do miss, the pre-seasons, <laughs> not the running. <laughs> yeah, we are going away for yeah, a week or so. Good yeah. fun. Look, I mean, you're right in terms of the starts of the season. Unbeaten in 12, won nine of those. You got your one and only goal during that time as well with a win at Rochdale. Uh -huh. How soon did you think, well, I mean, watch this and, and you can talk us through it and what it was you felt like, but how soon did you think in terms of promotion, and you know what, it's going to happen? Um, I think... As soon as, as soon as the wind started coming, it just, everyone, even pre-season, I remember players talking to me um, and saying that we can achieve good things here. So um, I, I just think right from the start, we just knew that where, where the club was going to go. And like I said, we didn't look back. We just, uh, we just kept going and going and going. Yeah. People mention about the sort of the, the wins uh, against, what was it, back-to-back 1-0 -back wins uh, in Sheffield, wasn't yeah. it? There's the Sheffield clubs, United yeah. and Wednesday as well, yeah. as the real turning point. Did you guys feel that as well? Um, yeah, de definitely the, the wins helped, especially against your title rivals, um, promotion rivals. So, yeah, to get back-to-back -back wins in that short space of time was um, was crucial, really, just to, to get get a bit of pressure off your shoulders and um, keep keep marching forward. Yeah, because because Wednesday finished second that season, and, and United finished third. So, you know, they were crucial wins. Brandon, during mid-season, in the what the ninety-nine, two thousand, mm. was there a point where you just thought, yeah, you know what's going to happen. Uh, well, that's a championship winning year, yeah. Uh, um, we were up at Huddersfield and I think Yaudi came off injured uh, just before half-time and uh, we went on a 12-match winning run and it was about halfway through that. We were six wins out of six, we catapulted ourselves to the top of the league and suddenly the dressing room was extremely confident. There is a turning point normally in every year where you go from just fighting every week and the results come and you might get a draw, might get a win, might get a loss. There is a point where you start winning and there's a confidence within the group. You can just feel it and then it just yeah, it snowballs. Yeah. yeah. We just saw the celebrations there was. Yeah. 101 points. That's incredible in itself, yeah. isn't it? What was key in your mind across the 46 matches? Um, consistency, really. Um, although we had uh, a big squad, um, the, the players that were selected week in, week out pretty much stayed the same. Um, 
So yeah, just consistency and just um, keep keep nicking them results and keep ticking them off. Good team spirit as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, the 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 team knitted nicely right from the start and the yeah. pre-season tours and and yeah, res results obviously help that as well. Um, that helps to build trust in one another and um, confidence going forward. And that's why it can help also getting players in early, can't it? Because you know you you have that pre-season to bond and then you feel like your your pals are ready rather than someone just turning up. Yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, we we had a few players still joining throughout the season or, or late on in that transfer window, but majority of the of the tran uh, of the window was was done early, and like I said, the the squad was pretty much together before um, the pre-season tour, which is quite unusual mm -hmm. as well because that is early on in the in the window. I would have said that was probably the main difference of the two championship winning squads actually. Kerbs never made too many changes. He got himself in a position where the squad had a huge core. So we were only ever making three or four, you know, whereas quite often now you do see 12 changes in the summer. Mm. We never really had that. You know, that, that 98 period to 2004 or five or whatever, very few changes in the summer, mm. you know, and, he, and you kind of knew who was going. You know, it was just a case of who was coming in. Please don't be a centre half. Well, it, it wasn't you going, was it? Was it no, you yeah. about eight one-year contracts? You were yeah, I had several, yeah. several yeah. one-year contracts, but yeah, I, I always, always around sort of February. I was sort of. Do you need to see me, Gaffer? He's like, no, <laughs> no, I'll see you, mate. Royce, where, where would that season rank for you in terms of your career? Um, obviously, it's, it's, it's probably up there as as the best. Um, just. For, don't get many chances to win win things in your career. Um, the season after, although I got injured, um, we finished just three points off the playoffs, I think, which was um, an achievement in itself. We still had the same sort of squad from, from League One. Um, so we competed really well that season and that's up there as well. Let's talk about that injury as well, because the following season did start well, but then you had that setback. You got an injury against Palace, I think yeah. it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, how disappointing was that for you? Yeah, I was disappointed because um, early on in my career I was injured and uh, I just sort of got a run of games together. So the title winning season, I played all but one, the last game of the season. So that was by far my best sort of return in, in terms of games. Uh, and then to go into the season, the next season, a, a league above, I felt, I felt confident. I started off really well, playing well. And then, yeah, five games in, um, broke three metatarsals and didn't, didn't return again till Jan January, I think, mm. sometime. Yeah, I mean, you two, before we came on air, were comparing horror injuries, I have to say. <laughs> I don't know who had a more difficult... Uh, you know, I, I certainly had plenty, well. but, but you two, right back. How, how difficult is that mentally? It's, yeah, uh, when you're playing, it's, it's difficult. Um, when, you, when you finish through an injury, it's, it's something. I'm not sure many players sort of would know how that feels. Um, and then you have the, you always have the questions of probably what could have been if you didn't, if you didn't get injured. So, um, part of injuries is, is, is with you for life now. So it's, um, yeah, it's just, it's difficult, um, but you can't do a lot about them. You just got to keep picking yourself up and going again. Mm. You returned from injury in what the February had a very strong end into the season and almost made it into the championship playoffs. Yeah. Did you feel you got back to your best? After that injury, um, or did you not quite feel the same? Uh, it's hard to say because at times I, I would have felt I got back there and then something else would happen. So that that injury, three uh, three better tarsals, I did two two more times in in the following season. So I had follow on stress fractures of the same bone. So um, I'd, I'd get back up to a level, feel I was I was back playing to somewhat near my best football, and then all of a sudden you'd pick up an, another, another injury. So yeah. it's, very, it's very hard to, to keep picking yourself up and going again. It is, isn't it? Something about left backs, no? Well, I don't know. I mean, you, you, well, you, you had it really worse than me. Was, well, yeah. no, I had it early on, and then I, I was all right. But, you, I mean, it's not a scar between you, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Talk to us about another left back then, Chrissy mm. Powell. Yeah. What was he like to play under? No scars either. <laughs> No, he, he's 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 uh, the gaffer's one of the best um, I played with. Obviously, had Eddie Howe as well, which I rate highly. But the, the gaffer, is, Chris Powers, still calling is, the gaffer. He's up there. Yeah, yeah. I pick up the phone, gaffer. How you doing? So, can I come in and shadow you at Tottenham, whatever? But um, yeah, he's all, he, again. He's he's 
he's been the same as playing un, un, like under him and until till he is now when I've finished playing. He's he's just always on hand if I've got any problems. He's always there to to pick up the phone and you got that you got that feeling with him when he was the manager. You you knew where you stood with him. Uh, you knew what he expected of you and. It, that just shows his quality as a manager. Yeah, so I got a text. I, I sent him a text only about half an hour ago. I said, Tell me a little bit about Royce. What's he like? He said, A very talented fullback, Scotty. Happy to defend, but equally happy to go forward, comfortable on the ball. Real shame with his injuries as he could have played Premier League. He said, He feels his nutrition contributed to his injuries and his mood. He was almost as moany as John Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe yeah. that? No. Yeah. No. I was yeah. waiting for a bit in the end. Yeah, yeah. I, I, but, it's funny why I've gone into nutrition and I've learnt it. And um, one of the, one of the classic signs of underfueling performance and football is um, mood swings. Um, so how you feel day to day, if you're irritable, is a is a classic sign of not fueling the demands of football. So I've learnt I've learnt a lot in in since finishing, mm. um, and I can pinpoint a lot of it back to um, some reoccurring injuries, um, picking up needless injuries, and yeah, definitely moods. I wonder if we can still get that to Robbo. Well, I was just saying, even that, now. think about it, he never saw him eating, did we? I've got to ask you as well, um, how disappointing was it when, when Paoli left after the FA Cup quarter-final quarter defeat to, to Sheffield United what, in 2014? Yeah, really disappointed. I know the, the, the whole squad felt fondly of, of, of the gaffer, so um, to see him go and, uh, and what he'd sort of built um, just sort of come crushing down was was hard hard to um, swallow at the time. Um, I know a lot of players felt like that. I know Jan Kermagant was a big believer in what the gaffer wanted to uh, to bring to the club and bring to Cholton. So um, to, yeah, to see him go was was hard to take. Mm. Let, let's touch on you leaving now as well because you went to Sheffield Wednesday in the summer of 2015, and, and it all happened quite suddenly, didn't it? What what happened? Did, did you want to go? <laughs> um, no, I didn't, want, I, didn't, I didn't want to go, to be honest. Um, but the club was changing; it was, it, it was evolving into into a new sort of structure. So, whether they saw me as part of that model was was um, was up to them. Um, they made their feeling clear. So, yeah, it was time to to move on and uh, look forward to. I'd also sort of fallen out the out the team as well. So maybe it was a good time for myself to to go and. Um, not be too comfortable at Charlton and push yeah. on again. And after the takeover of Roland de Chatelet, how much did things change? Um, they did change drastically. Like obviously, the manager that had built the foundations of the club and the players, they they were all sort of, sort of uh, deteriorating and going off and doing their own thing. So the, the, the gaffer left, then has a knock-on effect. The players were being sold as well. Um, so yeah, the, the structure changed. New owners come in, have new philosophies and new ways of doing things. So. Um, it was, it's just part and parcel of football, really. But let's end on a positive note, shall we? I mean, how would you assess your time here? Brilliant. Um, like I said, play, playing-wise, I had my, probably my most amount of games as well. Uh, felt like home. Still does feel like home when you turn up. So, um, yeah, can't, can't speak fondly enough of the, of the club and highly enough of the club. So, um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. That's good to hear, Rosa. We're really pleased you are here with us as well. And hopefully, if you can bring us three points this afternoon, we'll hopefully. have to wait and see yeah. if that's the case. Thank you. OK, uh, let's look at what happened last week, shall we? Which, of course, was a very good win against Burton. And, you know, back to back victories, Brownie, we have to say, was, wasn't an easy one. And let's start with Craig because he's come in for some stick lately. So he deserves the praise. Two assists this season, the most of any goalkeeper in the top four divisions, 10 home clean sheets which is the most of any goalkeeper in the top four divisions. I think it seems crazy the season we've had, but that's pretty impressive, isn't it? Very impressive, yeah. And, and, and you have to be positive. You have to take the positives out of, you know, any positives you can, you've got to take out of this season because we've underperformed, you know, and they're two great stats. It, 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 I said to you, when that ball came in from the long throw and he gathered it in, he was already on the move, looking forward. He, uh, Connor Washington's timing of the run was superb, but McGillivray, you know, recognised it made his three or four yards and the delivery on the technique of the strike was absolutely first class. 
we, we struggled in recent weeks, haven't we, with the sort of long ball as well. From a defending point of view, you know, Jack has yeah, talked I, about the clean sheet. Are you happy with that? I'd, I'd have had somebody in front. You know, every long throw that came in, I, did, I didn't think there was somebody set in front, which makes it much easier for the guy at the near post to win that first header. But these, these are little things. You know, at the end of the day, I, I, you know, you listen to, to Jimmy Floyd Asselbank afterwards, and you'd have thought we were awful and they were they were outstanding. <laughs> you know, they, manager that. Yeah, and he did, they didn't have a shot on target. And, and and actually, when you defend like that, you don't deserve to lose. Yeah. Uh, sorry, you don't deserve to win games. So it was a poor point I thought he made. You know, we weren't at our best, but we've been at our, we've not been at our best and got beaten heavily. You know, we weren't our best and we found a way to win. And, and I, like I said, you across a 46-game season, you're going to have at least 15 of those where it can go either way. Mm. And you've got to find a way to win more than you lose. Well, it's both of our scorers, Connor and, and Corey as well, got blistering pace as a defender. We hate that, don't we? Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you know you're in for a tough game when you, when you come up against someone like Corey, especially. Um, I watched him against Portsmouth and he looked, he looked lightning, so um, I'm glad I weren't playing that day. <laughs> well, Connor was absolutely superb, very welcome return to the side and Charlton TV caught up with him yesterday. Saturday, obviously the Burton game, I don't think it was our best performance to be honest. I think we were, it was tough because of the way they, they came to play and obviously disrupt, disrupt our game, but I thought it was a professional performance. I thought the two goals were great. Uh, obviously nice to get one myself and um, nice to be back playing, nice to be back fit um, and continue the home form to be honest. It's something, I don't think our home record's actually too bad this season considering obviously how poor the season has been on the whole, but we, want, we wanted to make this place a fortress, we wanted to make the Valley a fortress and um, we, we just got to keep backing it up with performances like that really. That flick went straight to Craig McGiver, he's going to send this away quick, Washington on the run and he's got the better of his man, Gilligan trying to bring him back and Washington with a chip over! The goal, um, obviously as soon as Maka gets it, um, I just sprint which is something we've worked on, something I've spoken to him about a lot, obviously we had it at Morecambe as well. And the delivery was fantastic. I mean, I think the Morecambe one was one touch as well. So it just shows you how good the, the delivery of the ball is. Mac is great at that. He's, he's got great distribution and obviously he's kept us in a lot of games as well. So um, big shout out to him for that. And any time he can get me an assist, obviously I'll be more than happy to uh, accept it. So When Mac catches it, all I'm thinking about is can I get in behind um, the first probably five or six Maybe they block it, maybe it doesn't come, but I've just got to keep making those runs. The manager says it a lot, and, and Maka tells me as well, um, keep making the run, and if he can do it, he will. And luckily enough, he, he managed to get a clear run at it, sends a great ball over, and a bit of hesitation from their keeper sort of makes my mind up, really. I love playing with Jaden. I think it's been evident from interviews and obviously, actually, our performances on the pitch as well. We just we just understand each other. We know what each other are good at and, and what what we aren't necessarily. And he does a, a hell of a lot of the dirty work for me, which I, which I really appreciate. Which means I can just stay on the last shoulder and uh, and just run in behind, which is which is obviously my strength. So he's great to play with. He's he's a great person off the pitch as well. He's he's a leader. He's great to have around, and he drags the standards up as well. And like you say, we've since we've been in the team and. Um, played together we've, we've had a really good run so it's, it's great to have those partnerships especially as a striker it's not often you, you play two up top anymore um, and we want to keep playing two up top so we've got to keep making sure that our performances are good enough to, to warrant both of our places in the team. Eight games to go now I think we've, we've got a really good run and we, we just want to keep that going really especially with the home form and obviously we need to improve the away form as well we, we want to get as many points on the ball as possible and, and build into next season so and on a personal level, obviously I want to score as many goals as possible in the next eight games. I think my record under this manager speaks for itself really, sort of one in two when I've been playing up front in a formation and a position that I like. So I want to carry that on. If I can get four or five in the next eight, that would be, be great. And more obviously will, will be the aim. A simple question, Brownie, just how important is Connor to Charlton? Very. Yeah, I think he, he makes a huge difference. Uh, and I know the statistics about when they play together, don't need to go over that. But what Connor does is the unselfish running. He works the channels, he, he makes defences drop, which creates space for other players to play in between the lines or drop deep and receive. Um, very unselfish in what he does. Um, and he'll pop up the goal. 
you know, I, th I think he's obviously the top scorer in terms of league goals, which I always go on league goals because mm, mm. cup games are a bit flaky sometimes. They still do they? count, but I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. but you, you know, teams making 11 changes in a cup game and you get a hat-trick in it. Uh, to me, that's a bit flaky. It's league goals. You know, they're the, they're, they're the bread and butter. They're what makes the difference. And, uh, and Connor's leading for us. So it, it's, it's the unselfish running. It's, it's the fact that, you know, in, in, in terms of, how his body language is. He just doesn't stop working for 90 minutes. And if you're a centre half and you're looking at him, you think he's going to go again here. He's going to mm, go again. Mm. He's going to go again. And it, it just grinds you down. Well, he says that, doesn't he? Yeah. Was, you know, if it doesn't happen half a dozen times, he still he it's, doesn't give up. Yeah. And that's a sign of a quality striker that he's he's willing to still do the hard run even if he doesn't receive the ball. Yeah, I think you create your own chances that way, don't you? So you put yourself in their positions, but also as well, it helps pick the team up, gets them up further up the pitch and into the attacking half. So I think with, with Connor, he's deceivingly quick as well. You don't expect him to be as, as quick as he is from just no. looking at him. So, um, yeah, he's definitely a handful. And it is hard for Jacko, isn't it? You know, when you think about, you know, you want your best, any manager wants his best players in the side. When your best players are both up front, they do make a difference, don't they, when they're back as yeah, a partnership? Yeah, enormous difference. And actually, I think sitting here some weeks when you just watch the performance, we do tend to forget that. Mm. It's easy to forget. And actually, when you're coaching and managing yourself and, and you lose a game, you think, well, hold on a minute, I'm, I'm missing my best four players here. Give me, give me a little bit of a break. And then when you sat here, you go, cool, dear. You know, so it, it, we, we do forget. And actually, no team really can miss its best two or three or four players and mm. it not affect them. It will affect any team in the league. Um, what I would maybe argue is we, we perhaps haven't had the strength in depth in that position. Mm. Let's have a look at the team again, shall we? And remind ourselves of it. It is unchanged, well, for the third successive time. So let's hope we're looking at three successive wins. And actually, Royce, am I right in thinking you played with a very young Jaden Stockley? Bournemouth? Yeah, is that yeah, right? Bournemouth, yeah. yeah. He's been, he's what was been, he like? He's been the, the same size since he was about 14, <laughs> I think. So he's, um, again, he's, he's, he's another, another player who's going to give you everything on the pitch. Yeah. He, he, puts him, he, he throws his weight around and he, he's, he knows his attributes. He, he knows he's not the quickest player, but I mean, he. he, he makes himself available in the air especially and he's, he's a real presence and a handful as well. And the midfield three is always interesting to me, Browning. Again, I suppose you can't really change it, can you, at the moment? I, I don't think you can at the moment. Um, what I would say is I think we've searched and searched and searched and actually when Johnny first got the job, we all said, oh, the balance of this three now yeah. looks really good. With Elliot. And yeah. actually that disappeared somewhat. Yeah. And, and, and that's been the frustrating thing, I think, with this side over the course of the season the consistency just hasn't been there. So it forces the manager to make the changes. But for the time being, this three is doing a pretty good job, yeah. Let's have a look at Doncaster then, shall we? Managed by Gary McSheffrey now. Four points from safety, no wins in three, no, no wins in four, sorry, no goals in three. And they are under a lot of problems. Of course, Matt Smith that we know about, Tommy Rowe, who's a very consistent player for them as well. I mean, what, what are we thinking here for, for Doncaster? I mean, it's, it's, why are you laughing? Because if you see the stats, it's, this is a 5 niller. But we know it doesn't bear out like that. No. You know, you've got to beat the 11 in front of you, but their statistics are horrendous. 73 goals conceded, 25 losses in a season already. Um, you know, everything stinks that they're going down, or points towards they're going down. But, it is, you know, their home record's atrocious as well. So everything does point towards a Charlton win, especially with how we've responded in the last mm. week. But football just doesn't work that way. You have to earn the right, whether you're playing Rotherham at the top or Doncaster in relegation, you have to earn the right. And we've got to go and earn the right today to win this game, but we should win it. So, Royce, what are you thinking of today? You know, your mentality of going up to a team that's really, really struggling, but we need yeah. to win this, don't we? It, yeah, Charlton, Charlton, you would you would like to think we'd win, but playing against them relegation, sort of... Teams and the teams that are fighting for their life, they're, they're always very difficult, especially when they're when when you're away and playing in their home ground. So um, it will be a difficult game. It won't probably won't be the prettiest of games either. But um, you'd like to think Charlton could get the three points or should get the three points. Do we play the same way that we've been playing in the last two home games? Because the away form has been very different, hasn't it, to, to the home form? Well, what I'd like to see is us be really resilient and not concede. They didn't have a single shot on target. Now, some people might say that's down to them. You may look at it I'm without watching the 90 minutes, but there are elements that we might have brought into our game where we're making it difficult for them to get the right shot away at the right time. We've got them at the right angles on their weaker foot, etc., etc. So what, what I'd just like to see is that we don't concede against Doncaster. You know, and I, I think if we don't concede, we have got a goal in us and we will score. 
which would then lead to three points. OK, well, look, uh, apologies. We're due to technical difficulties beyond our control. We aren't currently receiving pictures from Doncaster. The team behind the scenes are working hard to resolve the problem. We'll be able to provide audio commentary. And as soon as we solve the problem, we will go live to Doncaster. So I think the teams are about to kick off as we are heading towards three o'clock. Let's get to our commentary team of Terry Smith and Greg Stubbley. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, uh, Brownie, and thank you, Royce. Good to hear Royce in the studio. Uh, and as Scott said, if you are uh, tuning into Charlton TV, sadly there is a, a network issue beyond our control that uh, the our feed isn't currently receiving pictures from uh, from the stadium. So uh, just audio commentary for the minute, and obviously as soon as we have an update on that, and as soon as we get it uh, sorted, then we will bring you live TV pictures as well. But at the moment, it's just myself and Greg on audio, and Greg alongside me, Greg. Uh, be nice to make this three wins um, on the trot, wouldn't it? And a great opportunity to do so as well, Tell, against a side that's struggling for form, a side that's struggling for goals. Um, and this is a Charlton team that's full of confidence at the moment. So you'd expect, weirdly, coming into today, that, that Charlton have got a little bit of confidence about them and hopefully we'll show it today. And it's the addicts who get us underway, but the launch forward from Sam Lavella was looking for Stockley. Goes straight into the arms of Jonathan Mitchell in the... Doncaster penalty area, Doncaster in their traditional red shirts, red so uh, shorts and red socks with white. Not quite hoops, but lines across the shirts and socks. Charlton in uh, all black today, black and gold. And Lavelle gets another header as uh, Doncaster come forward. Ball into the box, looking for Pivula. Slightly long on that from Jackson, it runs through to Craig McGillivray. And, uh, he's Charlton defending the end, away to our left in front of the travelling Charlton fans. Stockley this time does get his head to the clearance. Washington looking for it. Put it up in the air and then cleared further by Jackson along the line and it uh, isn't kept in. Charlton will have a throw. So 15, 20 yards inside the Doncaster half on the Charlton right-hand side. Matthews preparing to take this throw. Throws it into the middle and uh, catches everybody unawares. It'll be picked up by Fraser. Further out to the left is Blackett Taylor going to take on his man for the first time and does so goes past him on the left ball attempted cross is blocked away and Charlton will have the first corner of the afternoon yeah it's a nice throw from Matthews switched the play across to Fraser he turned on his left foot was able to go out wide to Blackie Taylor took it in his path straight away his first fault was he's going to take on the right wing back of Barlow drove down the line and managed to win the corner Doncaster lining up same formation as Charlton Barlow being the right wing back left wing back for them uh, it's Ben Jackson, so Charlton will seek those opportunities. What wing back v wing back? Referee Sam Allison just wants uh, a word with the amassed ranks of Charlton and Doncaster players on the uh, left corner of the penalty area. And uh, the Doncaster man hit the floor. I think uh, Stockley in there as one of the protagonists. Yeah, I've not seen Charlton line up from a corner from this way, so for those who are listening, it's more to the right of the penalty area. Looks like it's it was central, uh, but they're moving inwards now as Fraser prepares to take. Tommy Rowe was the uh, Doncaster man in that melee. And it's Fraser over there on the Charlton left-hand side preparing to get this ball in. A sort of aborted attempt the first time. And a lot of movement on the edge of the penalty area from Charlton as the ball is delivered into the far side of the six sharp box. Perrington's there, but he can't get meaningful contact. And Stockley again went to ground. This time he was up against Oluwu, and he's uh, still complaining to the referee that uh, he was manhandled. Yeah, I think he was as well, Tell. There was two players, Lavelle and Stockley, were closely marked. I mean, it's, they, may, they may well have been tugging at the shirt of their opponents as well, but it was a good ball in for Fraser. He reached Perrington in the end at the far post. It wasn't a clear-cut opportunity for Perrington. He just got his, sort of, his foot on it and went harmlessly wide in the end. But good delivery from Cholton. Mitchell sends a goal kick forward, it's flicked on and then flipped on further by Dodu, but Fraser back there tidying up for Charlton finds Perrington. It's a good ball out left to Blackett Taylor, looking to take on Noyle. Blackett Taylor still in possession, edge of the penalty area now, cuts back in on his left, goes back out again, still in possession, Blackett Taylor, it's a Stockley with a toe poke and cleared off the line. Fraser will pick it up for Charlton, goes back to Dobson, across to the right-hand side is Clare. Clare looks to chip this into the box, but it's too deep for anybody in a black shirt. And it runs away for a goal kick. Stockley 
frustrated not only that uh, his stab forward was cleared off the line but then the delivery from Clare was too long for him and Doncaster will have a goal kick but uh, big chance for Charlton well, you, oh, big chance for Charlton but the defender from Doncaster was woeful to say the least I mean Perrington with just a clearance in the end Blackett Taylor has all the space in the world no one marking him Blackett Taylor is then allowed to carry the ball 10, 15 yards no one makes a challenge he just goes into the penalty he's got three players for company he's able to beat all of them the ball sort of just makes it way towards Stockley gets a toe towards the ball pokes it forward and luckily for Doncaster there's a player on the line to clear it away I think it was Jackson in the end challenge in there from the goal kick and uh, if it was uh, a Doncaster player or two Doncaster players colliding but, uh, one of them was Dodu trying to see who the other one is uh, currently on his knees and it's Tommy Rowe the Doncaster captain is up now but the physios come on so he'll have to come off but uh, yeah Greg you're right it's uh, Doncaster, obviously, in their league position, low on confidence. With, uh, only won one in six and only three in 12, which uh, puts them in that 23rd position currently. It's just bizarre, the, the defending now, just parents with the clearance, and Blackett Taylor on the left-hand side, there was no one next to him for about 10, 20 yards. It's bizarre defending. Referee restarts the game by dropping the ball to Purrington and now LaBelle goes right to Clare. He's got space in front of him to stretch his legs and come forward on the right-hand side. Tried to find Gilby, blocked away, but it'll be Sam LaBelle collect this. And the Charlton half on the right side goes out to Gilby, who stayed up by the right touchline. Got Matthews behind him, Matthews back in the Charlton half. Little touch to Clare and inside it comes to Dobson. Instant ball out, looking for Gilby on the Charlton right-hand side. Covered off by Oluwu, who puts it out of play for a Charlton throw. And, uh, probably the... Uh, I've got the worst place for a, a, a barrier right in front of my face now, so uh, I'm going to have to stoop to uh, watch Adam Matthews to look to maybe send this ball long and into the box. Just fancy Stockley to get the first ball here, Tell. It's a long throw coming in the pounds here, and I fancy Stockley to get across. Matthews launches it in as Lavelle's come forward it's an easy header right for Smith Claire though meets it and then Gilby coming back towards it flicks it on looking for Matthews but it'll be tidied up by Smith once more and he sends it long and forward Dodu will pick it up after the knockdown and then sends Kivula back again into the left hand corner the Doncaster left hand corner that is but uh, too much on that and it'll run away for a chance throw well it's quite interesting that throw tell because that was very similar to what Burton Albion did last week at the Valley where instead of throwing towards the penalty area he looked towards the edge of the penalty area and where Lavelle was so we were all expecting Stockley to get the run on the near post but instead they were looking for Lavelle just on the edge of the penalty area but the throw was actually a slightly wayward Doncaster able to clear Charlton switched the play off to the left hand side and Blackett Taylor inside it comes to Dobson it's a lovely pick to find Gilby Gilby's got Matthews by the touchline behind him in support it's clever it's holding a little bit short but he gets there anyway but Gilby could be offside here and he is just ran a little too early but it may have something to do with the fact the ball back from Matthews to Clare was a little bit short yeah, that's poor really poor that's a simple pass just completely under hits it I don't think he's aware that um, Clayton was there and forced Clare into a rush pass forward, which Gilby was clearly offside. But it's been a good start from Charlton, opening seven, kind of seven and a half minutes. It's, it's been a start where they, they could have easily have got a goal through Stockley. They've kept good possession. Mitchell's free kick is met by Lavelle, heads it back from where it came, and it's a good run in from Washington into the channel. And he thought he saw the keeper off his line, tried his luck, didn't get enough on it, didn't get underneath it enough to launch it skyward to maybe lift it over Mitchell. But uh, following on from the confidence of that uh, chip lob, if you like, from, uh, from the opening goal last weekend. Washington tried his luck, but sadly, to this, uh, on this occasion, didn't get any success. As Doncaster send the ball forward, as Rose sends it across, but it's going to be easily picked up by Purrington, who's got space to run into on the chart on the left-hand side. Just approaching halfway, goes over halfway now, Purrington, still in possession. Little stab in the Fraser, gets it back, Purrington, he was... Stretching for that though, but still manages to get the ball to Dobson. He goes backwards and across to Lavelle, who's just outside the Charlton penalty area in a central position. Out to the right is Claire. Goes back inside to Sam Lavelle. 
Looking maybe to stretch this by switching it across, looking for Stockley in the air. Beaten to it, this time by Noyle. Headed out towards the sideline, Fraser there. And may have come off the back of Fraser and has. Uh, Fraser, I think, was hoping or wishing the ball to go out on the full, but it didn't. And Smith was over there to uh, just put him under pressure, and it's come off the back of the Charlton midfielder and away for a Doncaster throw. Again, if you are just joining us, technical difficulties means we don't have pictures from the Eco Power Stadium at the moment. It's uh, it's not a Charlton issue, I have to say. It's uh, an EFL one, I think. And uh, apparently they're working very hard behind the scenes to get pictures to you as quickly as we can. But in the meantime, Charlton have some defending to do on the left-hand side. Lavelle clears it, but not very far. Doncaster pick it up midway inside the Charlton half. Comes back and across. That's a poor ball. And it's well picked off by Gilby. Oh, and he tries to send Washington immediately through. Just over hit that, runs through to Mitchell, but that was also a chance. Came from Doncaster's own making. And the ball back into the middle has also given Washington something to chase. And Doncaster just struggling to get it out, but they have now. And it's on their right hand side as they come forward. Ball. Dobson chasing his man down. Looks like Williams there on the right hand side for Doncaster. It may have been Mark. Oh no, in fact, back to Smith inside his row, Charlton back in in position, forcing Doncaster back a little bit, the ball across to find Clayton, further across here is Olowu, goes back to Clayton, Charlton stopping Doncaster from coming forward, Olowu back in possession on the Doncaster left hand side, goes past Gilby, who just had an arm on his shoulder, enough to bring him down, Olowu, so Doncaster will have a free kick, about 15 yards or so inside the Charlton half, it's too the easy. Centre on the edge of the shade here at uh, the Echo Power Stadium because it's a gloriously sunny afternoon here in South Yorkshire. Yeah, Gilby had a little pinned. There's nowhere he could really go, and then Gilby shim shimmy to go down the line and just open up the space for Lou to take it past him. Gilby had to foul him because there was a lot of space behind. It's just giving Doncaster a slightly soft free kick opportunity to test the chance defence. Clayton sends it in. McGilvery comes looking for it. Taps it in, doesn't claim it enough, and it's headed back in by Rowe. Still on the edge of the penalty area, Smith sends it skyward. Gilby trying to get there. Lavelle does as well, and then Gilby sends it long and forward up towards Washington, who gets his head to it, trying to find Blackett-Taylor. But it'll be picked off by Barlow. And Gilvery will be uh, a little bit concerned that uh, maybe he was looking straight into the sun. He's right. Uh, and that's uh, Doncaster really making a mess of trying to get this clear. And again, Washington looking for it. And it needed Mitchell to come out of his six-yard box and swipe it clear, but it'll be a Charlton throw ten yards away from the corner flag. And from one end where Charlton looked a little bit jittery from the cross free kick into the box, Doncaster looking even more jittery trying to get the ball out of their own box. I mean, they're defending at both ends there, too. First of all, the ball in towards the pounds here, and McGilvery comes, it's, it's quite a low sun, it's in his eyes. Didn't fancy him to get there. In the end, he, he did get there, but could have palmed it away. Charlton have this far, I'll come back. Matthews launches it in again, Lavelle can't get there, it's headed clear, Claire will pick it up for Charlton, heads it into Dobson, who has to go backwards to collect it, but he turns away from his man and finds Fraser to his left. Ball into the box, Washington with a touch, can Gilby pick it up? No, Washington trying to get there again, but it's swiped clear by Smith. Good header from Purrington, and then Dobson in support, gets it across here to Matthews, just about on halfway, Matthews tackled to an Unfairly, according to the referee, by Rowe, but um, that looked a little soft to me. Yeah, that's never a fan in a million years. I'm very surprised he's given that. But just going back to the opportunity, Charlton almost were presented down the other end. Um, Mitchell's clearance was woeful, came towards Clayton. It went for some reason to go back to Mitchell, who was being closed down by Washington. And in the end, it took an important touch by, I think it was Jackson, just to poke it towards the goalkeeper again to just clear it away. But... Doncaster don't look comfortable with the ball at the back. Charlton really need to continue to press, continue to push up when Doncaster in possession because you can see they're a side that really struggle for confidence. They're struggling for performances at the moment. Charlton just need a goal. Delivers it to Stockley, who gets his header there, and it just couldn't get to Washington. I think it might have been Williams who headed it away. And then Doncaster tried to clear it away with Jackson, but it was blocked away by Gilby, but it will be a Doncaster throw, just a few yards in from their left-hand corner flag. Charlton trying to pin the home side into the corner here and create another opportunity. Who are 
Olowu heads it, throws it clear. Row with the header on. Robson can't get there. It's a flicked header on to Pivula by Dodu, but it's picked off by Fraser. He tries to go out to Blackett Taylor, who takes it in his stride. Super work from Blackett Taylor into the penalty area. Oh, and is oh, he? Penalty. He's given a penalty. Just a little touch past his man. He looked like Blackett Taylor had taken a heavy, too heavy a touch. It almost enticed the defender into making the challenge. And then Blackett Taylor got an extra leg out there just to put his toe on the ball to take it round his man, who was committed to the challenge and took out Blackett Taylor and Charlton have a penalty. He did ever so well, Blackett Taylor, but he's flirted with that already. Driving at the Doncaster defence on three or four occasions already. They've allowed him is that the space to do so. that on the right-hand side? I think, I it, think is. it was. And it was a heavy touch, but it just invited the challenge. And he just got there first out of his man. He wouldn't have gone to the ball anyway, but it was a clear penalty. It was a heavy challenge. He didn't make any contact with the ball. Took out Blackett Taylor. And now Connor Washington will step up for Charlton. Quarter of an hour into the game. Charlton with this penalty. Connor Washington steps forward. Strikes it. Keeper saves it. Down to his left-hand side. The keeper saved it. There was a little stutter from Washington in the... Stride up to the ball. Trying to commit the keeper. But you give credit to Mitchell. He stayed upright, stayed strong. And down to his left-hand side made the save. It wasn't a great penalty, Tell, in fairness. It, it wasn't. He didn't get a lot of power on it goalkeeper's just guessed the right way I think he's just trying to outwit the goalkeeper try and make him make, make the move first he didn't well he's Keep pursuing the ball now save. Washington into the right hand channel this time Noyle gets enough of the ball to put it away for a Charlton throw Charlton glorious opportunity to take the lead goes begging it just, yeah, just stepped up he was slow he, he's a good penalty taker usually Washington hits with a lot of power but this one didn't have any power at all so even if Mitchell made the save, put a bit of power, he had to power it out. He was able to gather it quite comfortably. Matthews will send this in long once more. Lavelle on the edge of the penalty area, and it's towards Lavelle it goes. He's got nodded out of the way, but it'll run through to Blackett Taylor. Still in the left-hand side of the penalty area. Fraser gone over in the overlap, but Blackett Taylor makes it to the corner. Gets the cross in, cleared away. Smith trying to dribble it out of the penalty area, takes a risk. Manages to get it clear, up to Hibula. Sends Dodo on his way. Down the right-hand side for Doncaster, up against Purrington. This time Purrington, though, no, gets a decent foot in and makes the challenge, but Noyle on the overlap, gets it back. And inside, cross comes in. Comfortable take by McGillivray. One end to the other there. As McGillivray rolls it out to Dobson, who can turn into space. Fraser to his left. Blackett Taylor goes on a run further out to the left, just covered off by Noyle. So back inside it comes to Dobson. Picks out Gilby on the right hand side. He'll just let it run and. Yes, I'm not sure the. I'd have to see it again, but I'm not sure there was as much contact on Jackson as he's making out. There was certainly a late uh, lunge in there from Gilby to try and get to the ball. I thought Jackson rode the challenge personally, but maybe there was enough contact to uh, send him to the floor. But you'd imagine the referee's going to put Gilby into the book here because it was a lunge. He was trying to get to the ball. Jackson just got there first, rode the challenge, went down in a heap. It's a poor decision by Gilby. He was never going to win the ball. Yeah. Never going to win the ball. Um, it was late. Yeah, I think there was contact on Jackson, heard a noise, clash of boots. But in, in comparison to, say, the Hamer one last weekend where he jumped off the ground and was two-footed, this one was, his feet were low, he just made contact with Jackson, he was late, and I think the yellow card, which has been given, is the right decision. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a, it's I'm a, not sure there was a huge amount of contact with Jackson. He should have done it, though, Gilbert. But he was, yeah, as soon as he, he makes the lunge, make it. It was a 